CV parametric selection tag is a Python expression for Cinema 4D that makes it incredibly easy to generate new selections on parametric objects and spit those out into selection tags, which you can then apply materials or deformers to. So I'm just gonna turn off my interactive render region here and take a look at my scene. Uh, in it, you see I've got a cube and it's got a uh, parametric selection tag on it. And you'll see that I've got the noise option activated. So it's randomly generating this selection using a noise field. And I can adjust my bias to grow this noise on and off. And it's even adaptive to changes in my object. So I can, for example, add more polygon segments or remove them, adjust my fillet radius. And you'll see that the selections are updating live based on those changes. So this is really, really powerful. And uh, the image that you see here was generated using a combination of these different parametric selections. So I'm gonna pop into a simpler scene just to demo how these different features work. Here I've got a tube object that I've added some segments to. And you'll also see this null that says CV parametric selection tag. And here is my selection tag right here. I'm just gonna drag this onto my tube. And if you watch the next video, it'll go over how to uh, install this so it's a little bit easier to access. So I've dragged this tag onto my object and I'm gonna click on the select tab and it's gonna show me all of the different types of selections that I can generate. And it's a little difficult to preview a selection on a parametric object because when you go to polygon mode, you can't actually see those selections. So uh, I've created a little tool that allows you to easily generate a new selection tag and a material that is linked to that tag and it will link right here. Now, I don't like the color that I just generated. Uh, who wants a, a brown selection? So I'm gonna I hit undo and add a new one. Now I've got this sort of nice blue. And let's go ahead and just click through some of these options. I can choose borders. And this is going to select any polygons that are on a border that are not connected to other polygons. And the cylinder uh, doesn't have welded caps and that's why those edges were selected. I can choose to select via bounding box, which will select some portion of my object using the bounding box. And I can go from the bottom up to the top or the sides in. And this is a helpful way to generate a selection. The circumference option will use the size of my polygons to select them. So the longer the circumference of a given polygon, which is the length of all of the edges added together, the more likely it is to be selected. So I could, for example, select this middle row right here by selecting out and then increasing my minimum selection until that is selected as well. And that'll get my top and my, uh, my bottom. Sometimes you'll have to tweak those values slightly. I can also use the distance here. And what distance will do is select all polygons within a given distance of the center of the object. So I'm sort of selecting up and away, or if you like, you can create a target object and link that in. So you can then manipulate that target and get a nice spherical selection. Uh, next up, you have the option to select all of the polygons that are facing in a given direction. So I can select all of the polygons that are facing up by default, or if I wanna select the ones on the bottom as well, I can choose and opposite. Or uh, if I wanna get really interesting, I can go into my tube here and I'm just gonna add in a little bit of fillet and adjust the radius there. And now we see it's just those polygons that are facing exactly up. But if I wanna get some of those caps or those roundings rather, I can increase my tolerance and select those as well. And let's say I select these and I want a matching selection on the bottom, just choose and opposite. Next up, I can select by index. And the index is the value that you see in the structure manager in polygon mode. It's the, uh, the, the ID for a given polygon. So let's say zero, and it's gonna select the zeroth polygon. I don't really know where that is. So let's say 100, maybe we'll find that. Or we could say polygons 20 to 200, and it's gonna select that whole range of polygons, or 20 to 500. And you'll get all of those as well. Now, uh, you can add in a colon and select every other one or every third one. All of this is based on the index value of your polygon. Now, that is great for the gearheads and there's lots of options. You can read through the help right here and find some of the more exciting things like merging in multiple selection tags by name. 
But if you want a similar property or a similar way of interacting, just choose the range option, which is this guy right here. And range will allow you to select from the zeroth or the very beginning to the negative one, which is negative one from the end. And I can sort of count back this way. I can again skip every other, every three, every four, and I can even animate the offset to get that cycling up and down. And that's a pretty fun effect as well. Now, in addition to range, I can select by noise. And what this will do is it will use a simple noise that will overlay. I can increase the scale of this noise or decrease it. I can adjust the seed to get a different looking noise. And I can adjust the bias to sort of grow that selection in or out as we saw in that previous scene. I can even animate this. So if I could type in an animation speed of 100%, you'll see that it is animating through, and I can even animate the scale if, uh, if I so choose. So that's, uh, that's pretty fun. Uh, next up is the pattern option. And I don't know if I've seen uh, something like this anywhere else. And what it allows you to do is define a pattern using X's and dashes. And right now that pattern is going from the bottom to the top. So what the script is doing or what the expression is doing is it's looking at all of your polygons and any polygons that are at basically the same height, those get thought of as a single row in your pattern. And when I come in here, I can adjust how that pattern is drawn. So I can say X for on and dash dash for off two times. And I now have a ring that's selected every few times like so. So that's really uh, interesting and powerful. And you can draw this any way you want. Triple X, one dash, X dash. And you can get that pattern as well. So really great for sort of complex engineering uh, kind of looks. You can adjust how these are sorted. So I could do left to right. And this gets a little bit messier because when you look at this from your top view here, you'll see that these polygons are not nearly as neatly ordered. So it's uh, important that they do line up pretty neatly. Next up is Fong Break. And this will select any polygons that are uh, sort of broken edges. And I can, let's reduce the number of segments here. And you'll start to see that, yes, at these hard breaks right here, we are selecting the bordering polygons. In addition to Fong Break, there is Random, which is very similar to Noise, except it is just based on ID. And so it's really going to select a very random selection of polygons. And it's not at all spatial. And you can, again, adjust your seed. So this is a really great sort of transition on and off effect. Uh, in addition to this, we have access to our polygon type. And we can select all the triangles, or all the quads, or all the ingons. And I can now come in here and play with some more uh, options. So let's, uh, let's grab the bounding box here. And bounding box is just going to select the, let's say, the lower left corner. on the front as well. So we've selected a few polygons here, but not many everywhere. And then I can turn on post effects like symmetry, for example. And now this is going to select symmetry about the x axis. And I can activate multiple axes at the same time in order to increase the amount of these selections, which can lead to some pretty fun and interesting looks as well. Uh, let's go ahead and use a random selection to select just a few polygons. And I'm going to turn on coplanar. And it's going to select all polygons that lie on the exact same plane in space as uh, the selected polygons. And this uh, doesn't care if these polygons are selected or not. So if you have a bunch of like tops of buildings that are the same height but not connected physically, the coplanar option will grab all the tops of the buildings if, if one of them is selected. Connected is very similar to coplanar, but this one is based on uh, the neighbors and the maximum angle between them. Let me just hit undo here. Uh, next up is grow, which will grow out, and uh, you in can increase the number of iterations and it will grow. Uh, this is one of the slower effects. And if you turn on tolerant, it will do so like this. Now, uh, let's turn on a noise. 
And I want to show you uh, one of the other things you can do. In addition to growing out, you can grow in. So you can shrink your selection. And last but not least, you can take your current selection and invert it. In fact, it's not even the last. Uh, in addition to all of this, you have some options for how to intersect or, or combine these different selections. So for example, if I wanted to do uh, this sort of noisy selection, but I only wanted to select this sort of outer portion right here, I could choose to, I don't know, let's say, let's get rid of these uh, the fillet here, and I just want to select these outer polygons in this noisy fashion. Well, I can turn on uh, my facing, and I'm going to choose facing out, and now all of my polygons that are facing out, I'm going to sort of reduce the uh, tolerance here, and I can now intersect, and now it's just those that are facing out. Nothing on the inside here is going to get selected. Or I could choose uh, to, to intersect by a radius, or I could subtract one from the other. So that'll give me something like this. I mean, there's tons of options here. Let's see, one other thing that you might want to do is combine multiple selection tags, and for that, I'm actually going to have to uh, make this guy editable. So I'm going to grab my polygon selections, and I'm just going to make a couple new selections. So I'm going to uh, turn off auto-update here so I can make these. So I'm going to select here, select, set selection. I'm going to call this A. You can call it whatever you like. Select, set selection. I'm going to call this one B. And now in my tag, and I'm going to drag it over to the right here, I'm going to drag in A, drag in B, and I'm going to turn update back on and turn off all of these other sort of options here. And you'll see that those two selections are now added together. I can choose to subtract one from the other. I can intersect them. I can have one toggle what was ever, whatever was on in the other. Uh, there's a lot of Pretty exciting things that are, are possible there. And uh, yeah, I should also point out this update section down below. So if you have update turned on to auto, it will regenerate every time uh, the frame of your animation changes and any time one of your object changes. And uh, this is really great for when you're setting things up, but it can slow down your scenes. Just turn on, turn off auto if you're pleased with your selection, but you want to keep things parametric. Otherwise, just delete this tag and you'll have a permanently burned in selection with none of the computational expense. All right, that is a very fast introduction to all of the options of CV parametric sele selection tag. Uh, I hope that you find it as exciting as I do, and please try and create some work with it. I'd love to see what you come up with.